Hello everyone, welcome to Tutor IMG's short medical series. We're going to be taking a look at um, a very important topic, and that is the non-reassuring fetal heart tracing. When we talk about non-reassuring fetal heart tracings, there are a couple of um, varieties here. There is a category one tracing, the category two tracing, and the category three tracing. The non-reassuring one is a category three. Now, with the category three tracing, what we actually end up seeing, or what we consider, is basically the absence of variability. Variability is when the fetal heart rate varies from five to 25 beats per minute. And this is represented in the tremulousness of the um, the tracing. When we uh, consider the other, the second uh, component of category three, we talk about recurrent, late decelerations. What do we mean by these? Usually on a um, fetal heart rate tracing, at the bottom we have the maternal contractions. When the maternal contractions peak, the baby's heart rate should fall at the same time. However, there are times when this doesn't really happen. When this doesn't happen, what we end up seeing is something like this. When the peaks don't line up, we call this a late deceleration. Remember, the line is, of course, tremulous to indicate variability. Why am I focusing so much on variability? Because variability is one of the most important factors uh, in determining course of action. So this is late deceleration. Okay, third thing that we have to consider is what we call recurrent variable decelerations. What does this mean? Again, the mom's contraction peaks this way, whilst the baby's heart rate will fall like this. Some peaks might line up, but most of them are dipping without any relationship to the maternal contraction. This, the fact that it's rising up rapidly is still reassuring. If it stops rising up rapidly and becomes flattened out, this is a worsening. So this is what we mean when we say variable, recurrent variable decelerations. Even worse is when the baby's heart rate starts to show bradycardia which means that where the CTG tracing usually lies between 110 to 160 beats per minute, now this baseline is shifting to below 160. When this happens, the bradycardia sets up. A very horrible sign is when you start to see sinusoidal pattern with the tracing which is basically something that looks like this. So these are some of the um, category three tracing features. When we talk about late decelerations, some of the times late decelerations can be acceptable. The time when they become unacceptable is when 50% of mom's contractions are then linked with late decelerations. Another time when late decelerations become very concerning is when they're combined with loss of variability. When this happens, our course of action should be quite immediate. What do these um, CTG tracings really indicate? They indicate a very, very high risk of fetal hypoxic 
acidemia. How do we manage this? I'm going to be addressing that point in a follow-up video, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for supporting us, and please continue supporting and liking our videos.